Dispersion. The fact that the index of refraction is a function of the wavelength of light is called the dispersion. So a light with different wavelengths is refracted at different angles when incident on a transparent medium. So if we have light that contains several wavelength components, we will see this distinction uh, for the index of refraction for different wavelength components. So how does this behave? Generally, as the wavelength increases, V is equal to lambda f for uh, constant frequency when we go from one region to another region, when the wavelength increases, the speed increases. When the propagation speed increases, that means the index of refraction decreases. So uh, in the visible spectrum, this implies that violet refracts more than red. Why? Because violet has the highest frequency, lowest wavelength, uh, therefore uh, lowest speed and highest the index of refraction. So th that's the reason. And remember that E is equal to HF, that's the uh, energy of a wave packet, is a constant during reflection and refraction for each uh, wavelength component of light. So the frequency does not change when we enter a transparent medium. It's the wavelength and the propagation speed that changes accordingly. So if we look at uh, a white light that hits a prism, you can see that uh, we will have a spectrum that consists of a red, orange, yellow, a green, a blue and violet. So uh, we see that the highest refraction will occur for uh, violet because that's the uh, highest frequency component and the lowest uh, deviation will occur for red because that has the highest wavelength and lowest propagation speed inside the uh, prism. So it has the highest wavelength and highest propagation speed, therefore the lowest index of refraction in the prism. So. Um, we have one observation uh, that is uh, quite interesting. When we look at the sky, a raindrop in the sky appears red. So when it is high above and when, when the raindrop comes close to the earth, it appears violet. So why is that? So we have the sunlight hitting the uh, raindrop. So we can think about the droplet as a spherical particle. Uh, because the violet will refract more, so we will see uh, they will uh, reflect from the inner surface of the raindrop and uh, refract as they come out, because higher uh, refraction will occur for violet and uh, there will be less deviation for uh, red. When we look th at this droplet high in the sky, we see the uh, red light coming towards our eye, but when it comes closer uh, to the surface of the earth, the violet uh, part seems to appear, the violet part of the spectrum seems to appear, so it will appear more violet. And it's possible that light can make more than one reflection inside the spherical droplet. If light makes two reflections before exiting the raindrop, we can see secondary rainbows, however less intense due to loss of light via refraction out of the droplet. So uh, every time we get this a refraction and a partial refraction uh, out of the uh, droplet, uh, we will see a decrease in the intensity of uh, light. Uh, so um, basically the secondary rainbows that we observe will be less intense uh, for light refract uh, reflected from uh, the raindrop. Okay, uh, so Another interesting phenomenon is that when we have light traveling from a medium of high index of refraction to one with low index of refraction, there exists a critical angle, theta c, such that theta 2 is 90 degrees. This phenomenon is called total internal reflection. So if we have light coming from high index of refraction uh, medium, n1, greater than n2, hitting the interface between uh, n1 and 2, so we see that uh, n1 sine theta critical, uh, if we hit the... Uh, surface with an angle 
to the normal theta critical n1 sine theta critical equals n2 sine 90 this gives us sine theta critical is n2 over n1 remember that sine theta should be less or equal to 1 so this implies that n1 has to be greater than n2 so this will only occur if we go from high index of refraction medium to a low index of refraction medium if we have an angle that is greater than the critical angle there will be no refraction but only reflection so we will see for an angle greater than theta critical critical as you can see here we only see reflection of the light so only for the critical angle uh, we start seeing refraction so anything less than that we will have refraction and now this explains why diamond sparkles because the critical angle is 24 degrees for diamond in air light gets trapped inside easily making the diamond sparkle so we have several reflections of light inside the uh, diamond and that will make it sparkle uh, let's take a look at an example uh, a view from the fish's eye find the critical angle for an air water boundary assume the index of refraction of water is 1.33 so this fish looks at the water air surface and with what critical angle uh, do we uh, look at the surface and see no uh, reflected light this is 1.33 sine theta critical at, and this part air has index of refraction 1, 1 sine 90. The critical angle is 48.8 degrees. So uh, from water to air, the light path is reversible. So if a fish looks upward for theta less than theta critical, the fish sees uh, the outside because there will be refraction of the light but for theta greater than theta critical as we have seen here the light will be uh, reflected so the, uh, the the fish will see reflection of the bottom of the pond so the the light hitting uh, the fish's eye will be coming from the reflection from the bottom of the uh, pond okay so uh, we will see uh, the pond uh, the bottom of the pond uh, now, an important application for total internal reflection appears in optical fibers, optical fiber communication. We have a flexible uh, light pipe called optical fiber. Light travels through total internal reflections inside this light pipe. So we can see here. Uh, and losses will occur due to absorption, partial absorption of the light by fiber material and reflections at the ends. So we may have losses at the ends and also part of this intensity may decrease due to absorptions by the uh, optical fiber material. All right. So we talked about dispersion. Dispersion is the dependence of uh, the index of refraction on wavelength and the dependence is such that for high wavelengths we have a low index of refraction so so the angle of refraction will be less and for uh, low wavelengths or high frequency uh, light we will have um, a high index of refraction so we will see that uh, in the rainbow the violet uh, refracts more than red and this explains why when we look at the sky uh, the rain droplets up uh, in the sky appear uh, red uh, whereas the rain droplets uh, closer to the surface of the earth will appear uh, more violet because we will see this uh, highly refracted portion of the uh, spectrum on the other hand, when light travels from a high index of refraction material to a low index of refraction material, there is a critical angle for which we have uh, no refraction. That uh, critical angle corresponds to the total internal reflection condition. And for any angle that is greater than this critical angle, we don't see refraction of the light. The light gets uh, basically reflected, totally reflected uh, by the surface. Uh, and this angle, critical angle, is very small for diamond in air, 24 degrees. So that means for uh, light that travels 
inside a diamond, uh, theta greater than theta critical condition is easily satisfied, so light gets trapped inside through several total internal reflections, and that makes the diamond sparkle. And we talked about uh, an example, a view from the fish's eye. Uh, the critical angle for the uh, seawater-air interface we calculate to be 48.8 degrees. So uh, if we have... Uh, the fish looking at the surface of the water for theta less than theta critical because uh, the, there will be reflect, refraction uh, and the total internal reflection condition is not met, the fish can see outside. However, for theta greater than theta C, the light will be reflected so the fish can only see reflections from the uh, bottom of the pond. So. Uh, the fish sees instead of the outside the bottom of the pond so by adjusting the angle with respect to the normal the fish can see outside or the bottom of the pond there is a nice application in optical fiber communication a flexible light pipe um, basically proper allows the propagation of light through total internal reflections where a losses in the intensity can occur due to partial absorption by the fiber material and reflections at the end points of the pipe.